Hello Facebook world, welcome to Como Live brought to you by the Legacy Amendment. My name is Jill, I'm one of the host stock keepers here at Como Zoo and we are live inside our zebra, kudu and tortoise yard this morning. And I, I wanted to introduce you to one of my favorite animals in the hoofstock area. And he's an animal that doesn't get a lot of attention because he's not a hoofstock. He's actually a tortoise. So this is Freddy or Fred or Frederick, whatever you want to call him. And he is our Salcutta tortoise. And Salcutta tortoises go by a number of names. They're known as Salcutta, Spurthide, or African Spurred Tortoise. So any of those speak to the same species. And Freddie here has lived at the Como Zoo for about 10 years now. We actually believe that he's about 20 years old. His hatch date is about 20 years ago. And Fred was originally a pet. And we're gonna talk about tortoises as pets real briefly in a little bit. So Freddie was 20 years old. He was housed as a pet. Um, the owners quickly realized he's just a small bulldozer and was destroying their house. So they reached out to their local zoo in Kansas and at the time Kansas couldn't house him so they reached out to us and we said sure we would love to take Freddie but I'll tell you a secret at the time his name was Frida they actually thought he was a girl tortoise and once we got Freddie Frida here um, he quickly started fighting with our male tortoise Fritz so we made a hard decision to split the two up um, and Fritz moved to a different institution and we kept Freddie here. So Freddie is 20 years old. He weighs right about 140 pounds and that's fairly large for a Salcutta. Usually we see them anywhere from 70 to 200 pounds with the males being on the high side. So Freddie will keep growing. Typically though, they slow down after 10 years of age. Um, these guys can live anywhere from 80 to 100 years. We usually see them mature at about 15 years of age. And then, like I said, they slow down growing after that 10 year mark. So these guys, if you found them in the wild, you'd find them in Central Africa, in the Sahara region, in really, really hot semi-arid regions. So they are definitely adapted to living in the heat. So here at the zoo, he lives in with our zebra and our kudu, and he lives in this yard as long as temperatures are adequate. So during the winter time, we move him over to the old barn. And if you're familiar with Como Zoo, that's where we house our North American hoofstock, and we have a nice warm stall for him in the winter. And we get asked quite a bit, how do you move him? And I'll tell you, Freddie is very food motivated. If you see, he's got some, some lettuce and some watermelon and he crawled right out of his hole this morning for that treat. So all we have to do is show him that we have some green stuff or one of his favorite snacks and he'll follow us. Um, if he's being extra stubborn, sometimes we just put him in a wheelbarrow and we help him out a little bit. So he typically moves into the zebra kudu yard in early May and then we usually move him out of here in October once the weather gets a little cooler. And if Kelsey can scan over a bit, you'll see he's right outside of his den. So Salcutta tortoises are known for their digging ability. And they, they dig these burrows, usually to get away from the heat, but it's also just a home for them. It's nice and comfortable and it gives them a safe place to go. So I've read that they can dig anywhere up to 10 feet and they'll go all the way down in that burrow and that's where they'll hang out. And I believe it, Freddie here has actually dug himself quite a nice burrow this year. My coworker Adam could actually stand up in it at one point this summer. So we did have to fill in a little bit just because we were nervous that the zebra might collapse it on top of him. Um, but he hangs out during the night in there and if it gets too hot, he heads down in there. Um, so kind of tortoises are considered crepuscular. So they're usually pretty active at both dawn and dusk. Um, Fred here, he has kind of a routine. He's usually in his den up until about noon, and then we see him start to move around, and early afternoon he kind of cruises the yard. And if you've ever watched him with the kudu and the zebra, he's, he's in charge out here. They don't mess with Freddy. Um, every once in a while the kudu will try and challenge him, and we joke that he's just like a moving boulder to them, but for the most part, nobody messes with Fred. So I wanted to briefly talk about the pet trade. So as you can see, Fred is a big guy, 140 pounds. He's very muscular. He's basically a moving boulder. Um, 
but they don't start that way. They actually hatch out at about two to three inches. And if you can see his face, he's absolutely adorable. And they're, they hatch out with that cute face. So I understand why people think they might make a good pet, um, but they really don't. They grow up very fast. They make quite a mess um, and they poop a lot. I won't lie, we clean up a lot of tortoise poop around here. So definitely think this one through before, before you think about getting a bulldozer for a pet. Um, and I did want to talk real quickly, these guys are considered vulnerable in Africa and part of that is due to habitat loss, but the majority of it is due to the pet trade. There's quite a few eggs being taken for the pet trade. Like I said, they just don't do well as pets. All right, so one of the most common things I hear out here is look at that big turtle. So I wanted to speak real quickly about the difference between turtles and tortoises. So like I said, Fred is a tortoise. Now turtles and tortoises are similar, but the easiest way to tell them apart is where they spend the majority of their time. And tortoises for the most part are going to be land dwellers. They're gonna spend most of their time on land and there's a couple other things you can look at to real briefly tell them apart. And part of, part of it is what Fred's showing us right now. He's got this big dome-shaped shell or carapace. So usually the tortoises are a little more rounder, a little more dome-shaped, and the turtles are nice and flat. And that's because the turtles spend most of their time in the water. So they want to be streamlined and move through the water really well. You can also look at their legs. Fred's got these really short, stubby legs. Um, that are covered in spurs or thigh or spurs because of his name, the spur thigh tortoise, and those help him dig out. Whereas turtles are usually going to have more flat, smooth legs, and sometimes they'll have webbed feet to help them move through the water. If you look, Fred actually has these big toenails, and that helps him dig. So Freddie is eating a big chunk of watermelon. This is one of his favorite summer treats. Um, he's making quite a mess too. So these guys naturally would really eat anything green. Um, they live in a very arid climate, so they would eat grasses and flowers. If they find any sort of weed or cactus they'd come across, they would munch on that. Here at the zoo, his diet is primarily hay. So just like the zebra, he is considered a grazer and he will munch on grasses and hay all day long. Um, we do give him some extra treats, some green stuff, because he seems to like it so much. Um, but we are pretty careful with the amount of protein and vitamin D or vitamin three that he D3 that he ingests because it's not good for tortoises. <laughs> do you guys have any questions during Como Live? Feel free to type them in the comment bar. We'll try and get back to you with this, some answers. One of the things we get asked about is, can the tortoise come out of their shell? Um, and they actually cannot. So tortoises, their shell is actually fused to their back and their shell is made up of a 59 to 61 bones or plates that are sometimes called scoots. So if you look on his, on his back, he's got a bunch of small plates there and those are fused to him. So he will carry his shell wherever he goes and he'll grow with it. That shell is made of keratin, just like our fingernails, and they can feel through it. So they're actually quite sensitive when you touch the back of their shell. Freddie's got a spot right above his bum that he likes to get scratches on. He does a little dance when you get the right spot. <laughs> Do you have any questions, Kelsey? Fritz. Fritz. Yep. Freddie was Frida. Yep. What happened to Fritz? You know? So the question was, what happened to Fritz? So Fritz moved to a zoo in Freeport, Minnesota, to Hempker Park Zoo. And last time I saw him, Fritz was living with about six other small African tortoises. And he, Fritz is about 120 pounds, so he was a little smaller than Fred. And he's by far the largest tortoise there. So he was just in heaven. He was in charge of all the little tortoises. They both had quite the big personality. And then these guys burrow. Do you know of any other tortoises that burrow? I've 
oh, you're going to put me on the spot. I'm sure a number of other tortoises burrow, but I, I couldn't tell you which ones. <laughs> So I do know these guys are the third largest land dwellers next to the Aldabra and the Galapagos. So technically they're the, the largest mainland tortoise and the other two come from islands. All right, well, thanks for joining us today. Thanks to Freddie for joining us with his watermelon treat and Enjoy the rest of your week.